the definition of linearly independent and linearly dependent functions. A set of functions like f1, f2, f3, and fn is said to be linearly dependent on an interval like i if you can find constants like c1, c2, c3, cn that not all of them are equal to zero such that the linear combination of these functions becomes zero. So what's the meaning of that? It means that c1, f1 plus c2, f2 plus c3, f3 plus cn, fn is zero. Otherwise, we call these functions linearly independent. Let's take a look at this example. f1 is sine 2x and f2 is the multiplication between sine and cosine. From pre-calculus, remember that sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. Now, can you find c1 and c2 that makes this linear combination equal to zero? By investigation, we can check to see that negative 1 times sine 2x plus 2 times sine x cosine x is equal to 0. Why is that? Because this one, negative 1 times sine 2x, sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. So you can write it as negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2, sine x times cosine x plus 2 times the second function, which is sine x cosine x, they are opposite of each other. So it's going to disappear and it is equal to zero. So you found non-zero CI values that make the linear combination equal to zero. These two functions are linearly dependent functions. An example of functions that are not linearly dependent, f of x equals to x and absolute value of x. These two functions are not dependent. There is no way you can find c1 multiplied by x plus c2 multiplied by absolute value of x becomes zero. So those ci's must be equal to zero. So you must have trivial solution. So basically you can say that they are linearly independent from each other. So for the equation c1x plus c2 absolute value of x be zero, it only has trivial solutions c1 and c2 must be equal to zero. This satisfies the definition of linearly independent functions. Well, you have a shortcut. The shortcut is you form the run scan. Suppose each functions f1, f2, f3, fn, they all have at least n minus one derivatives. Then the run scan is defined as the determinant of, they're going to list these functions as they are on the first row. On the second row, take the first derivative of these functions. On the third row, take the second derivative of these functions and continue. And on the last row, take the nth minus one derivative of these functions. Guys, this is important. Students usually make a mistake and they go and take the last derivative of the function. This is wrong. So you must stop at n minus one derivative of the function. So after finding the run scan, which is the determinant, if the run scan is non-zero, then you have linearly independent functions. The theorem says, let y1, y2, yn be n solutions of homogeneous linear and order differential equation on an interval like i then the set of solutions is linearly independent on the interval of i, if and only if you form this run scan and it becomes non-zero for every x in that interval. So now we have a nice shortcut. Let us apply this shortcut here. Consider these two functions, e to power 3x and e to power negative 3x. If you were to find the run scan, on the first row, you're going to list these functions. There is no doubt. On the second row, you're going to take the first derivative of each one of these functions. The derivative of e to power 3x is 3 e to power 3x. So this is the first derivative. And we're going to stop here because we have just two functions. The derivative of e to power negative 3x is minus 3 e to power negative 3x. Now, if you find the determinant, it is negative 3 e to power negative 3x times e to power 3x minus 3e to power 3x times 
e to the power negative 3x. If you combine these two, it becomes negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6, which is not 0. So again, to find the determinant of 2 by 2 matrix, you multiply the entries on the main diagonal minus you multiply the entries that are not on the main diagonal. So let me change the color minus the multiplication of entries that are not on the main diagonal. And then you do the algebra. But please note that e to power negative 3x times e to power 3x is e to power 0, which is just 1. So e to power 0 is 1. So both of these become 1. So you have negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6, and it's not 0. So basically, based on the theorem, you can for sure say that they are linearly independent from each other. What is the definition of fundamental set? Any set y1, y2, yn of n linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous linear and order differential equation on an interval like i is said to be a fundamental set of solutions on that interval. Why it is important? Because we can form the general solution. Let y1, y2, yn be fundamental set of solutions of homogeneous linear and order differential equation on an interval like i, then the general solution of the equation on the interval can be written as the linear combinations of these solutions or functions. So from previous example, we saw that if we take these two functions, e to the 3x and e to the power negative 3x, the run scan is equal to negative 6, which is not 0. So they are linearly independent from each other. We can conclude that y1 as e to the power 3x and y2 as e to the power negative 3x form a, a fundamental set of solutions. And if you find the linear combinations of these two solutions, it also a solution for the differential equation. And it is called the general solution of the equation on the interval. And the linear equation, differential equation that you have is the second derivative of y minus 9y equal to 0. You can basically check to see if these two functions satisfy this differential equation, which is very easy to check. So each one of these separately are solutions for this differential equation and also their linear combination. So their linear combination is called the general solution of differential equation. Let's go over another example for you, everybody. So again, remember that if you have a bunch of functions that are linearly independent, they form a fundamental set of solutions for the differential equation. And then what you can do, you can take the linear combination of those solutions and it also a solution for that differential equation. But in this case, we call it a general solution. So y is equal to c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus cn yn. Remember that we are dealing with homogeneous equations. It means that on the left-hand side, you have the derivatives, and on the right-hand side, you have zero. Take a look at these functions, e to the x, e to 2x, and e to 3x. They all satisfy the third-order differential equation down here, the third derivative of y minus 6. The second derivative of y plus 11y prime minus 6y equal to zero. So if you take the third derivative of e to the x and plug it here, minus 6, the second derivative of e to the x, plug that in here, plus 11, the first derivative of e to the x, minus 6 e to the x, it becomes 0. The same for each one of these. Now, are these linearly independent from each other? Let us form the run scan. Remember, on the first row, you're going to list these functions. On the second row, their first derivative. The first derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The first derivative of e to 2x is 2 e to 2x. The first derivative of e to 3x is 3 e to 3x. Then you take the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. 
the derivative of 2 e to 2x two is 2 times 2, which is 4 e to 2x. Two the derivative of 3 e to 3x three is 3 times 3, which is 9 e to 3x. Then, if you find the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix, it is e to the x times the multiplication of entries on the main diagonal here, 2 e to 2x times 9 e to 3x minus the multiplication of entries that are not on the main diagonal, 3 e to 3x times 4 e to 2x. In general, if you want to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, this is the formula that you need to follow. So minus e to 2x times e to the x times 9 e to 3x. So here you have e to 2x and the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix plus e to 3x times the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, which becomes, after simplification, 2 e to power 6x, which is not 0. So what's the meaning of that? It means that these three functions are linearly independent from each other, and the linear combination forms a general solution for the differential equation that we have here.